Okay, so this video we're gonna uh, rig up a character in uh, Spryder, and uh, hey, you might be wondering why are we in Adobe Animate and looking at something that's already animated if, uh, if we're gonna do this in Spryder. Well, this is the uh, program that I illustrated the artwork in, and uh, I actually kind of forgot I had already animated this guy in a, all these different uh, poses, so uh, I suppose I could uh, include this with the source files for you guys. Uh, but we're gonna do it all, or not all of it, but we're gonna do some of this again in uh, Spryder where we rig up an in, uh, in inverse kinematics setup or bone structure for the uh, the character. And uh, when I originally animated this a few years back, I, uh, I didn't do anything like that. I'm not actually a huge fan of um, of using a, uh, a bone structure for animation, but you know, that's just kind of me. Uh, some of you would are, are gonna say, say, well, no, I have to have a bone structure, <laughs> but uh, you really don't. Uh, but anyway, so here are the, uh, just the, the basic parts uh, of the, the, the character over here already separated. And uh, I'll give you guys the, the Adobe Animate file as well, as well as the, um, each one of these parts already exported out as a separate PNG file, so you can just bring them straight into Spryder and uh, and work with them. But I did just want to show you kind of how these were organized. Uh, the leg pieces over here are, uh, each leg has two parts to it and then the shoe down here at the bottom. Uh, this isn't the prettiest leg set up over here. Maybe move it over a little bit. But, um, but each of these three poses here are just using the same leg pieces, and uh, that makes me somewhat confident that we can at least uh, do something of a, a walk cycle just using these without having to swap out any parts. Now, you can swap out parts in Spryder uh, on an inverse kinematics chain, uh, but uh, you know, just be a little bit easier if we don't have to worry about that for now. So anyway, I've already gone ahead and exported these parts out. Uh, let's head over here to Spryder. This is the Spryder uh, Essentials Edition, which means it's the free edition, and uh, you can see I've already got a project open. Uh, let me do this. Let me just go ahead and create a new project from scratch. And uh, the message you're going to get is choose the root folder for your project. This should uh, be a folder. Uh, well, just start off. This should probably just be a folder with uh, all of your parts already contained inside of it. Okay, so and you'll see the folder with uh, all these uh, parts already in here. So I'm just going to save it right in there with everything else. And uh, when you do that... Uh, well, actually, it just tells you to choose the root folder. Now, if I hit save, it's actually going to save it. So let's just call this uh, Arnold. Why not? I don't think he'll mind. Um, <laughs> just some guy named Arnold. Uh, you can see that it's already found the uh, the parts of this guy included in there. Okay, so it doesn't actually, you don't have to go and, and import them. It's gonna locate them in there. And uh, I guess I should also point out too, if you're just using Spryder for the first time, this is not a drawing program. It's just strictly a animation program. And it's really just intended for um, animating uh, kind of simple characters. I mean, you could do effects and things like that, spinning coins, everything. But uh, it's really it's really just kind of set up to, to give you a, you know, a nice little, uh, uh, animation sequence and uh, those you can set up down here. So for example, what we should be doing when we initially create this is basically make a, a base animation or not even an animation, just a base character. And then what we can do from there is uh, clone that off uh, for, uh, let's see, where's the clone? There's the clone over there uh, for the different poses that we're going to animate. So basically we can always go back to our initial, um, inverse kinematic or yeah, our initial setup with the bones and everything rigged up in there, uh, and copied from there. But I would say, go ahead and expect to, um, <laughs> and I might even have to do this myself. Go ahead and expect to have to do this a few times. Um, I certainly had to, I need to zoom out a bit. So I'm going to, you know what, actually it might be a little bit easier if I just kept this in the middle for right now. I was going to say I'll, I'll, uh, I'll use this line right in the middle as the, kind of the ground plane. But do you know what, I think while I'm rigging this guy up, what I'll probably do is just do it right here in the middle because uh, on a Mac, I'm using a trackpad over here. If I kind of zoom in and out, I mean, if I'm just using, using two fingers on the, on the pad, you can see it just kind of always wants to zoom out from that point, the center point. So while I'm just kind of getting things set up, maybe I'll just leave it right there and move it up later. So uh, basically what we need to do is just reassemble this guy, okay? So as we drop things in here, obviously they're gonna kind of drop in in the, uh, you know, the things highest that I'm dropping in the most recent. Uh, but we can change our Z order over here. Uh, you can also select one of these objects and uh, holding down the Command key on the Mac 
let's see, yep. And then just using your directional arrows on the keyboard, you can go up and down the hierarchy like that. So just a quick way of doing that. I guess, you know what, maybe I should just pick these things out as I find them, right? <laughs> Groin, what a great name for something. Uh, little grenades. This could look cool, kind of bouncing around as he's running. And let's, I guess we should start um, shoulders. Left mid arm, I guess I was thinking. Is it stage left? If you're facing, I don't know. Where's the other le left? Uh, oh, there, there it is. I should probably go back there. And once we start to get things assembled, you know what, maybe what I'll do is I'll just pause the video while I kind of get this all in here. Oh, and shoot, I actually forgot one step, which I actually, I, I haven't totally found this to be necessary yet, but um, in watching other uh, uh, video tutorials um, straight from the authors of the program, they, uh, they suggest setting an, a, a pivot point uh, before you do anything down here. So just double click on one of these objects and see that little pivot point right there. You can go ahead and just put that kind of where you think that particular body part should pivot from. And uh, you can you can actually do it after the fact too. So might not be able to do it once you start animating. I guess that's the main thing. So anyway, some of these you know pivot points is going to be obvious. You know for the neck probably around uh, here or so. This neck we might not be able to get, get away with moving too well because, I mean, just take a look at what sort of happens. Well, it looks like it left that pivot point, right? Where it, oh, you know what it is? I had to, you actually have to click on a, OK. There we go. Now you can see it adjusted it. But, you know, this, um, this neck was just really kind of never intended to, to move. Otherwise, um, I, I, what I should have done is made kind of a, the shirt have this skin part of it in it and then just have kind of like a more of a square deck but that's okay we'll leave that as is uh so anyway yeah i'll uh i'm gonna pause the video again and uh then i'll kind of readjust some of these pivots and i'll come back with everything set up okay and here he is so uh one thing i just tried to make sure i was doing was, was getting these in roughly the right uh z order so uh, when we do start moving things around uh, you know, this this arm is, you know, in front of the body and stuff like that. Oh, see, I messed up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take that back up the chain, right? Let's see. Okay. Um, but, of course, you can also change this uh, after the fact, too. But, uh, all right, now let's uh, move this guy up. Okay, and uh, oh, for a second there, that, that didn't look like it was going well. But uh, there we go. Uh, a little bit easier to move things around. Uh, hold on the uh, space bar. There we go. So let's uh, select everything again. Nudge it back down just a little bit. So his legs are pretty much just right on that ground plane. Okay. And uh, let's let's call this like base, maybe unrigged. Okay. And we could also uh, copy or clone it at this point. Uh, that way, if we mess up the rigging somehow, I don't know, <laughs> just destroy things. Um, we. Uh, we can always run back to the fort, so to speak. Uh, save the file, and uh, if you if you are feeling pretty confident that um, you know you're not going to need to move things around for a bit, you can go over here to lock sprites. This is going to make it so you just can't move these things around. Um, probably a good idea while to do that while we're setting up the um, the bone structure, and actually even while you're animating as well. Uh, one thing I should point out is that you don't actually have to um, set up a bone structure. Okay, you could just you know kind of animate this guy right away without the bones uh but hey what fun is that right so uh i did i just did a whole video on uh, kind of just the timeline down here but main things i want to point out is that uh, we are at uh, frames not frame zero we're at millisecond zero and this goes up to 1000 milliseconds so it's just a one second animation you can change this uh, at any time if you want but probably if you kind of knew already well i want this to be a two second animation go ahead and put in 2000 over there uh, and then of course, you know, uh, just moving the timeline around is going to take us to a different, uh, frame. <laughs> I keep saying that <laughs> different time. Okay. Uh, if you are a little bit, um, if you want to be a, a bit more, uh, uh, frame minded, like I kind of am, you can go over here and click on snapping and then, 
choose snapping frames and uh, that will snap you through the, through the frames here, but I'm going to try to embrace this whole milliseconds thing. And uh, so we'll, we'll see how well that goes. Um, they they kind of give you a simplistic view of the timeline uh, just by default. So you'll notice that, uh, see that little kind of white marker right there? Um, that's showing us that, the, that we do have kind of our base keyframe for all of these things right now. And um, and what happens if you uh, if you go out to say the middle and you start moving things around? It's actually gonna just by default go back and uh, go to animate back to this state over here. Okay, which actually I think is kind of neat um, because most of the time for your you know like walk cycles or just idle animation, you do always end up going back to your you know your initial um, frames anyway. So uh, I, yeah, anyway, I thought that was kind of cool, um, but. Uh, What's the uh, main thing I'm getting at here is that this little marker um, is going to show you a, a, a key. If there's a keyframe for anything that's been keyed, uh, that'll show up over here. Okay. And you can also, um, I guess, select it and delete everything at that point as well. But um, but then you can also expand this too. So you can kind of move this up and start to see all the things that are inside of there, and, um, you know, all the different elements. And actually, for some reason, maybe it's because. Oh, I know what this is. Right click on it. And right now I'm only showing the bones. Okay. And you can set uh, only show selected, show sprites. Right. So if I go to show sprites, you're going to start to see all these things, uh, all things that make it up. But for right now, let's just go ahead and take that off because we don't really need to see them if we're going to be using the bones, which we should set up, I guess, right now. And as we're already at 11 minutes, why don't we just drag this out to, uh, to another uh, video entirely where we begin to uh, rig it up with the uh, IK.